So case series may refer to the study of a single patient and that sometimes is called case reports or sometimes it might be a small group of patients and this is what's scientifically or technically the proper term for case series. So case series the probably it's usually refers to a small group of patients and if we're studying only one single patient it's called case report but a lot of people confuse these two terms and they call both of them the case report and the case series they call them case series uh, however so moving on this type of study is purely descriptive and cannot be used to make inferences about the general population of patients with that disease so it's basically only to describe certain um, certain events but that's it we cannot make any inferences about the general population of patients with that disease studies of this type may lead to the formation of new hypotheses so we just might come up with hypotheses based on what results and just basically do more studies to confirm the hypotheses we have on the basis of the information obtained Analytical studies such as case control studies or cohort studies could be designed to investigate a possible link between the disease and its risk factors after us getting um, a direction of uh, a certain relationship or a generalization from conducting a case control. So another way of... Um, of addressing this or trying to explain it we have the case series we said it can it's purely descriptive we cannot make any inferences so after we do that and we get certain results we might need to uh, conduct more analytical studies such as the case controls or the co cohort studies uh, that's just to investigate a possible link that we thought or we came up with a hypothesis that it might be present between a disease and certain risk factors. The case control studies uh, compare rates of exposure to risk factors for a specific condition between subjects who have that condition who we call the cases and subjects who do not have the condition and those are the controls so the controls are the subjects who don't have the condition and the cases is the subjects who have the condition and the case control studies compare rates of exposure to risk factors between uh, the cases and the controls so if you, you look at them um, so here in this table we have cases and we have controls cases are subjects who have certain condition and controls who don't have the certain condition as a part of a case control study the cases and the controls should have very specific definitions for example the time period for the condition to develop diagnostic criteria for the condition population of interest and other potential contributing factors should all be identified and described now once cases are identified controls from a similar population with similar chances of developing the conditions are chosen so we identify the cases then we will need to go and get controls from a similar population who have similar chances of developing the condition each selected subject is then evaluated through time to assess the status of exposure to risk factors and then the data we obtain we sort it out in two by two table and the reason why we call it two by two it's two by two the yellow in the video and the lesson here that you're looking at it's uh it's because you only get two by two values or basically a total of four cells and this is all of your values are within it now once we fill in these four cells 
we can calculate what's known as the odds ratio. So the odds ratio, we, can, uh, we calculate it to measure the association between the exposure factor and the outcome. Now, each cell of the table represents a number of exposed cases, which is A, and then exposed controls, which is B, and unexposed cases, RC, and then you have D, which is unexposed controls. The ratio of A to C is the odds of exposure in the cases, whereas the ratio of B to D is the odds of exposure in the controls. A to C, again, it's the odds of exposure in the cases, and B to D is the odds of exposure in the controls. Now, the OR, or, or the odds ratio, is the ratio of the two odds. Uh, in other words, the odds of exposure in cases to the odds of exposure in the controls. So looking at the equation, the odds ratio is going to equal A divided by C, div that all divided by B divided by D. Now, as we said, the OR measures, uh, or the odds ratio measures the association between the exposure to a disease risk factor and the disease outcome. So this odds ratio significantly greater than one, that indicates that those with the disease are more likely to have been exposed to the risk factor than those without the disease. Uh, an odds ratio of one indicates no association between the risk factor and the disease outcome. And if the odds ratio is less than one, this indicates that those with the disease are less likely to have been exposed to the risk factor than those without the disease. And this is important for you to know because you might get uh, a question in the test to tell you what is the conclusion. So it will show you um, a table such as the one that you're looking at at this moment and give you data in these cells and then it will ask you calculate the odds ratio then it will ask you uh, what it means the odds ratio of one or if, if you got an odds ratio of more than one what it means so uh, an odds ratio greater than one this indicates that those with the disease are more likely to have been exposed to the risk factor than those without the disease so it means um, if you have, if you came across the risk factor, it, there you have, or you had higher chances of getting the disease if you've been exposed to the risk factor. Okay, um, so let's say lung cancer and smoking is an example. Now, an odds ratio of one indicates there is no association. An odds ratio less than one indicates that those with the disease are less likely to have been exposed to the risk factor. So let's say if we're addressing uh, myocardial infraction and taking aspirin. So aspirin actually works as a prophylaxis for the myocardial infraction. So an odds ratio less than one indicates that um, if you have myocardial infraction, there is less chance of you might have gotten aspirin as a prophylaxis. So case control studies are usually faster and more cost effective than the cohort studies. Uh, they are particularly useful for the study of a rare disease because they guarantee a sufficient number of cases with a disease. However, they are, are prone to bias. So the main challenge is to identify the appropriate control group now, the identification of controls is typically done by drawing a random sample from the original population at risk. Alternatively, controls can be selected by matching two cases in terms of risk factors that can cause the disease. Now we have an example 
of um, so we have a case control study of smoking and cancer of the pancreas among 100 cases and 400 controls so cases who actually have it and controls who don't have the cancer okay and the risk factor is smokers versus non-smokers so based on the equation that that was provided to you in the previous slide uh, I plugged in the information that we have or the data and the o, the odds ratio came up to be 4.5 so the 4.5 means that because it's more than one the odds ratio calculated from this data estimate that the smokers are 4.5 times more likely to develop cancer of the pancreas than non-smokers okay so this is the or basically in another in another terms patients who been smoking or have been exposed to smoke they have higher chances of developing lung cancer or patients who have lung cancer there are higher chances of them being exposed to smoking compared to the patients who don't have lung can uh, or uh, the pancreas cancer